the ultimate goal, it's where you've convinced yourself you're there and that you're in an imaginary submarine looking out of windows. And we'll be in that state within the next few years. We already know that virtually nothing in official statements is true and that propaganda is the norm. But it is nevertheless remarkable the extent to which secretive agencies in our government have gone to use celebrated events worthy of media attention and achievements in science to distract from covert activities, publicity as cover for top secret missions, and fooling the public was part of the gag. Real telepresence should fool you into really thinking you're there. The Alvin's interior is tiny. Three men must share this six-foot diameter sphere with the mass of control and video equipment so vital to the dive. That's good. Hey, frame up. I was always fascinated with the ocean as a kid. I was interested in boats and submarines, and I think everybody has some kind of interest in the Titanic. So I remember when I was a kid seeing the name Robert Ballard and hearing about how they'd found the wreckage of the Titanic, and it just brought flooding back in all the stories of what happened with the Titanic, which is its own conspiracy. And it was this incredible triumph of the man over the depths of the ocean and deep sea areas that he wasn't able to travel to just a few years before. And it was a big publicized event. There was National Geographic documentaries. There was illustrated books. I, I remember getting one from a museum and my grandparents were talking to me about it. So I remember, maybe not exactly when it happened, but generally I remember the period when it was a big deal that this guy, Robert Ballard, found the wreckage of the Titanic and he was able to send down a submersible camera and a mini submarine and a remote controlled submarine to film it. And they had lights and there was the whole thing. And only years later, as an adult, did I find out even a sliver of the truth of what really happened. He's now done interviews and, and pointed out that he was actually on a secret Cold War Navy mission when he found the Titanic. I had just found the Titanic in the middle of a top secret military mission. Behind the search for the famed liner is a spy story. The Navy wanted these two other missions to be classified top secret. Titanic became the cover story. Because guess what? Searching for the Titanic was not actually the real mission. And although most people just knew Robert Ballard as an explorer who found the wreckage of this ship, very few people seemed to take notice that he was in fact a Navy officer. And Ballard had been in the Naval Reserve for decades and put him on active duty to undertake this mission. Few have known the real story behind Ballard's discovery, that he was actually a commander in the U.S. Navy, and that he'd found Titanic while on a clandestine intelligence operation. I am an ex-naval officer. I have tremendous sympathy for the Navy. And the U.S. Navy funded this new technology. And he did so while working for the scientific institution, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. And Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, it's just worth pointing out, was founded with Rockefeller Foundation money. So it was founded with an agenda back in the late 20s, early 30s. It came into being on the coast of Massachusetts in a very elite area, a historic area with lots of universities. And this thing is tied to big money, but of course exploring the ocean is very expensive. And that's why the Woods Hole Institute has pretty much always been sponsored by the Navy. And since at least World War II, the Navy has has tasked them with investigating or carrying out or operating certain things for them. And throughout the years, most of Woodhull Institute's research vessels were actually either paid for by the Navy or somehow working with them if not directly. And that's how this backstory came to be. Now, Robert Ballard, who found the Titanic, was actually on a secret Navy mission to find the wreckage of two U.S. submarines that because of the depth they sank to, the Navy was never able to fully investigate. They never had a clear picture of what was going on. And they had their own reasons, probably for covering up what happened to those submarines and what caused them to wreck because they remain unknown. It's going to give us a, a continuing, improving uh, capability for uh, search, for inspection, particularly inspection is in the case of um, Jason, that we've been trying to develop over the years ever since we lost Thresher about 22 years ago. Robert Ballard, working for Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, 
went to the Navy where he was on reserve and he basically pitched a proposal that they would help to sponsor his research and provide equipment so he could search for the Titanic, especially in light of his now over a decade of experience with deep submersive vehicles. Again, paid for with Navy money, developed and used by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute that Ballard had been using since the 70s. Hey, boys, away, my boys, hey, boys, away, and the Navy said they actually wanted him to look for the remains of the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. And the Thresher became the first ever nuclear submarine to be lost at sea. It was SSN 593, launched in 1960, and it went down April 10th, 1963. This was somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, and overall they basically think that it may have just simply gone down too deep, and then it was imploded under pressure of sufficiently deep water. But if they know anything else, they haven't admitted it. And the other submarine was the USS Scorpion, SSN 589, which was launched back in 1959, and it was lost on May 22, 1968, with 99 crew members presumed dead. And they tried to blame this on a torpedo accident that was vaguely tied to the Soviets, but that story fell apart quickly when it came to light that it was severely under maintenance. The submarine had not been kept up with, and in fact the military knew about it, and somehow they were actually testing in a secret program what would happen if they kept a submarine going without proper maintenance and the consequences were deadly so in a way this was an accident that was set up and almost in a way caused to happen at any rate Robert Ballard was sent out on the research vessel Knorr with the Woods Hole Institute with his fellow researchers and they used this machinery and this submersible to troll the ocean to troll the North Atlantic in areas that they had some idea about and they were looking for signs of debris and they found out that both of these submarines imploded and crashed down to the bottom leaving sort of a predictable debris trail. And after he completed this reconnaissance mission and filmed these submarines and told the Navy what they wanted to know and gave them the information, in particular about the condition of the nuclear reactors that were down there, any information about signs of tampering, whatever it is they were looking for, then they allowed Robert Ballard to use this same research vessel and the same equipment to find the Titanic, which he says he found in a very similar manner with a wide debris trail and evidence of implosion that broke the ship in two. Well, everybody saw the movie right so he found it and all of a sudden he was world famous overnight he was in headlines and newspapers everywhere no one could stop talking about the discovery of the Titanic and in all fairness it was mentioned in, in secondary stories and buried deep in the story that the Navy had funded the research they had paid at least two million dollars and had initiated the research but there was no mention whatsoever of Robert Ballard's search for these lost submarines there was nothing of the truth about what they were really looking for. Maybe there were other reasons that weren't even stated here. Maybe they didn't give a damn about what the wreckage looked like. Maybe there was something else. I really don't know. But I do know that they never told people the truth. They told them propaganda. They told them fairy tales about finding the Titanic. They told them about the triumph of science. They lionized and put a name and a face on a research scientist and made him into a modern day hero. And they completely buried the news of their secret activity. And as if all that wasn't enough, Operation Titanic is a term that was used in World War II for a series of military deceptions carried out by the Allied nations. And here again, however benign, is a military deception where there was a real mission covered up by the publicity and the excitement of the Titanic recovery operation. And that was all back in 1985, and Robert Ballard's gone on to do a lot of famous shipwrecks, he continues to do exploration, and the Navy continues to fund Woods Hole Institute, and Robert Ballard continues to attend Bohemian Grove, which he's been a member of since 1991. And the Navy continues to keep its secrets under wraps and under layers and layers of cover stories. And it's happened before in what was probably an even more notorious episode back in the 70s. 
In 1974, Howard Hughes made headlines after he had already been the eccentric billionaire, the owner of lots of oil companies, because he was launching a new ship, the Glomar Explorer, that would mine the ocean floor for valuable minerals, in this case, manganese nodules. And to do so, Howard Hughes supposedly built a new kind of ship that had never been built before, that had deep sea drilling platforms built into it, that had a secret compartment inside of it, and that had a retractable claw that could go down for miles onto the ocean floor. And at the time, there were promotional videos made about its launch. I'm now aboard what is probably the most technologically advanced seagoing vessel in the world today, the Glomar Explorer. Exactly what this ship does and what it has been designed for has been an area of controversy and speculation. But the truth underneath the cover story and the spin was that the CIA had paid for the ship and had got Howard Hughes to put his name on it as a cover operation. And the CIA recruited an entire team, they trained them under a false company, and they prepared them to go to deep sea in this mining vessel that had been widely publicized on a secret mission to recover a Soviet submarine known as the K-129. Four transponders are prepared and dropped to the ocean floor to feed information to a computer which operates the automatic station keeping system. This computerized system is responsible for continually correcting the ship's position so that it remains electronically tied over one point of the ocean floor. And everything about this project was epic. It, it was approved by Henry Kissinger at the highest levels. The budget came out of the Navy, and the huge operation with its big public cover was all devised to give a plausible, deniable reason because the Soviets would already know about the activities of a ship that big. And as it turned out, the Soviets were already following them anyway. And while the public had no idea about the true nature of the operation, the CIA had their team of drillers operating on the ocean floor, and they went down thousands and thousands of feet and picked up this Soviet submarine, hoping to recover secrets. In particular, they were looking for the nuclear reactors, the nuclear warheads, and what they hoped would be the submarine code book and other intelligence information. Or at least that's what they later said when the story came to light. And there's a whole backstory to how the New York Times was going to suppress the report that Seymour Hersh had put together. But the LA Times leaked the report first, so they went ahead with the Seymour Hersh article. The whole thing was a cover operation, and it was hugely wasteful of tax dollars. And the military people they talked to said they didn't even really get any worthwhile intelligence. But meanwhile, the upper levels, they celebrated it as perhaps the biggest intelligence coup in history. And it's all this secret submarine stuff that goes on and they told the public that oops they dropped the rest of the ship but they had given the rationale to the New York Times that they needed to suppress the report because of the possibility that they might make another attempt to recover this ship they never told the public that and they never told the public what became of the nuclear material or the other secrets the Glomar Explorer think of it as a working island Move place to place. This is incredible equipment, billions of dollars spent, secret pretext, cover stories, using propaganda and publicity to fool the public on purpose, to hide things in plain sight, and is there an even bigger story going on that has not emerged? Well, obviously the things we've been spoon-fed here are nowhere close to the truth, but we do get a hint with the account of Peter Hutchhausen a former Navy captain who was at one time the naval attaché in Moscow. He claims he spoke with a Soviet admiral who told him, Captain, you are very young and inexperienced, but you will learn that there are some matters that both nations have agreed not to discuss. And one of these is the reasons we lost K-129. And that's pretty interesting since the USS Scorpion and K-29 were both lost in the same year. And the suggestion is that perhaps the U.S. is responsible for downing K-129. Considering that the CIA is still ultra-secretive just about the recovery effort, it's pretty obvious that we never got the full story. These are larger-than-life legends and 
massive use of public propaganda to convince the public of something that is knowingly not true. And then the revelations come forward in the declassified documents and explanations that oops, things didn't work, oops, they dropped the ship, and they found that some mistakes were made. What was really going on? These were major, major, hugely expensive efforts. It's hard to believe they were fooling around and making clumsy mistakes. And it's hard to believe they would spend so much money just for a code book and a couple of warheads. Is there something else they were looking for? Is that really the value of reverse engineering? Or were these sides working together all along in the Cold War? I mean, the nuclear bomb was handed over to the Soviets by the British. Publicity as cover for top secret missions and fooling the public was part of the gag. Gee, is there anything else they haven't told us about? The ultimate goal, it's where you've convinced yourself you're there and that you're in an imaginary submarine looking out of windows. And we'll be in that state within the next few years.